All right, now we're not completely finished yet, even though we've learned how to solve these inequalities and we've learned how to graph them. We've learned the difference between the parentheses and the brackets, but we haven't actually written our answers properly. All we've done is graph them. There are two different ways to write your answer. And the first way is called set builder. The second way is called interval-notation. So I have um, kind of the sort of the, the book's definition, I guess you could say, of each one here. This is what set builder looks like. It has braces on either end of it, and then there's a straight line in the middle. These have actual meaning. It's almost like shorthand. This first brace means the set of, and then we have our variable x, which means all x's, and then this straight bar here means such that. Then we have this statement here in the sen in, uh, at the end that says x is less than or equal to 2. This statement is going to obviously change, you know, depending on what our answer was. So um, we'll come back to that in just a second, but let me talk to you about interval notation. Interval notation will mimic what we did on the number line very, very closely when we actually graphed it. Do you see how we have parentheses and brackets here? This is what, what we were focusing in on before, where we were talking about, um, you know, a, a parenthesis if the endpoint is included, a bracket, or a parenthesis if the endpoint is not included, pardon me, and a bracket if the endpoint is included. This is just kind of giving you a range of values to look at. Now, pretty much whenever you get up in, into, you know, your, your um, higher classes, especially college algebra uh, and above, you're going to be using interval notation for the most part um, on actually just about every problem. So it, it, this is not something to, you know, kind of blow off or forget about because you will see this. Now, we're going to go back and look at problems that we've already looked at before and we're going to write our answer in both set builder and in interval notation for each one of those. So let me go backwards here back to our first page um, where we started looking at problems, actually our second page, pardon me, and um, our very first problem that we looked at was the x is greater than 3. Now for me to write that in set builder notation we would have to say the set of all x's such that x is greater than 3. That's our set builder notation. For our interval notation we write it, use your number line to help you write it. It starts at 3 and goes all the way forever and ever and ever. We call that spot infinity. So we would say 3, that's not a very pretty 3, 3 to infinity. Now infinity always gets a parenthesis because it's some place out here. It's, you know, it's not something we can put our finger on. Um, it, it's just kind of some concept out here. It's, this is moving towards that. But the other endpoint we can absolutely look at. Here, you see how we drew a parenthesis here? Well, we're going to do the exact same thing when we write it as interval notation. So we really can just borrow what we did on the number line and write it as an interval instead. Here, for this second one, we had x is greater than or equal to 3. So in set builder notation, that would be the set of all x's such that x is greater than or equal to 3. We call that x is greater than or equal to 3 part our argument meaning, you know, that's our, our, what we looked at as being our answer. We just write it as a set. Now for the interval notation part of it, this would start at 3, and you see how we have a bracket around the 3? So this would be bracket 3, and it goes on to infinity, and infinity always gets a parenthesis. What about these two here? x is less than or equal, or less than 5, in set builder, it would be the set of all x's such that x is less than 5. In interval notation, we would start over here on the negative side at negative infinity and go all the way up to 5 with a parenthesis. 